Hi there, my fellow Java programmer. In this episode, you're going to learn why you would want to use a web server like Nginx or Apache in front of your Spring Boot slash Java application. Let's find out. Okay, so go back to the Nginx configuration file that you created in the last episode. And as you can see, we have a web server running on port 80, which is the default. And it covers server names markobila.com and www.markobila.com, which is my homepage. You have a location slash, which basically covers every request. And whatever comes in, you just pass it onto the Java application, which runs on port 8080, localhost. Now, the takeaway at the beginning is if you're just running one instance of one Java application on the machine and nothing else, and you have no static files to serve, you have no other applications running, you could, in theory, take your Tomcat or your Jetty, whatever that application is, running on pod 8080, and run it as a standalone application, and you don't need Nginx or Apache in front of it. There's a couple of challenges to set up Tomcat or Jetty to run on pod 80 without root, and also with configuring SSL certificates, but in practice, it actually runs. But what happens? If your website doesn't only consist of one application, like here, but you have different paths mapping to different applications, and it doesn't even have to be Java applications, it could be one Java application, one PHP application, one Python application, and whatnot. So let's quickly copy that location block up here, and then you just uh, paste it inside again, and imagine you have an admin application, and that's a different application than the rest of your website. And it also doesn't pass onto localhost 8080, but localhost 9000. And you can have a ton of these different location blocks in here and just map them to different applications. All right, and while we're at it, Nginx can also do load balancing for you. And I have an appropriate config block for that copied from the Nginx documentation. I'll just paste it in here, and as you can see, you define basically a backend. You could give it any name here, so I'll just call it backend. And the backend for now consists of two servers, localhost 8080, 81, could also be a range, could be more servers. And then Nginx will, by default, round robin root through these servers. So down here, you wouldn't actually say proxy pass localhost 8080, you would say proxy pass to backend because you specified it up there. And incoming requests will be routed appropriately. And whenever you redeploy a server or shut it down, Nginx will notice and also start firing requests to the server back again, to the instance back again when it boots up again. Right, so that brings us to the next topic. The next topic is actually SSL certificates. Imagine you want to run your website uh, as is the, the default basically nowadays under HTTPS. So you'd first of all have to put in some more listen directives up here. So listen to port 443, not 80 anymore because that's the HTTP part. And then you also need to put in some certificates. You can get your SSL certificates from a service like Let's Encrypt, for example, and then put them in here and just reference them like so. And that will be enough. And setting up SSL certificates with a plain standalone Java web server is a bit more difficult than that. And what you now have is basically the Marco Bela domain running under HTTPS. And then the SSL connection is basically offloaded at the Nginx web server. And the Nginx web server ha can connect to any backend it has to these different backend servers. And they themselves don't have to have SSL configured, which is quite nice. Another reason you might want to use Nginx is for caching reasons, and Nginx can do a ton of different things. So again, I'm just pasting in something from the Nginx documentation. And what you can see here is that basically every CSS file and every JavaScript file gets some headers added, an expires header and a cache control header, right? It's not only about headers, you can really cache also the whatever the proxy sends you back and set up uh, a cache for these responses. There's a ton of different things you can do with caching. And I kind of do the whole topic justice just in that uh, episode or in this episode rather. 
And then finally, you can also do things like rewriting URLs. So you can say when someone comes in with a URL like hello world, you actually want that URL to go. And that is just pseudo um, Nginx code, it doesn't work. But anyway, just to give you a, you could rewrite the whole URL to something like hello world. So there's a ton of things you can do. And you will also find a ton of documentation and integrations with third-party tools online for Nginx and Apache, no matter what you want to do. And that's also different to the Java servers that there's so much more community and documentation out there. And the last reason is when you're working in organizations, you'll feel, you'll find out that anyway, they're using a web server. It doesn't have to be Apache or Nginx, doesn't have, it can be something else, but there will be no way around using those web servers for security or for whatever reasons. And you'll be forced to understand at least the basics of whatever web server your organization is using. As an exercise, play around with Nginx, get it started on your local machine, set up a simple Java application like you did in the last episode, and then play around with the static files in different locations and see what you can do. Also, a great exercise is to make Nginx watch out for a file like maintenance.html in some directory. And if you put it there, it shouldn't route requests to your Java application anymore, but it should display a maintenance page saying we will be online again in one hour or so. Send me the solution or post it in the comment section. Let's see what you can come up with. Congratulations, you now know the what and why when it comes to web servers like Apache and Nginx. And in the next episode, you're going to have a closer look at a production-ready Nginx file to learn a bit more about some of the advanced concepts. So let's get right after it.